the behind the scenes of videos. We'll wait till that siren goes. I always get a little bit worried when sirens go past near our house because my parents live two kilometers down the road. So I'm just gonna quickly call and check they're okay and I'll keep going. Good morning. Good morning, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, just a quick call. I'm actually filming a YouTube video, but I just heard lots of sirens going past. So I was just checking you're all right. Oh, shame. No, we are absolutely fine. Okay, that's good. I'm coming to us. Thank you for thinking of us. That's all right. I will keep going. Okay, thanks. No worries. Bye. Bye. Okay. All right. <coughs> oh, goodness. This could take a while if I keep sneezing. Um, I was going to say something there, and now I can't remember. Um, 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 um. Hi everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Leanne Baker and one of the most requested videos I've been asked to film in the last few months is how I get rid of all the photos on my phone and into a book for the boys and our family to enjoy for years to come. I had just over 8,000 photos on my phone a few months ago and whilst I used to try and tackle a few photos every week or every day and stay on top of them, the last few months got on top of me and I kind of lost that system that had been working so well for me. So instead of completely freaking out, deleting all the photos and starting again, I really wanted to do something useful with all those memories that I'd been able to record. The first thing I did is have a look at the systems that I'd used in the past. Now, if you've been following for a while or you've, or you've watched some of my previous YouTube videos, you would know that I print our photo books using blurb books. I wait for them to have a 40% off sale and then I upload all my project life layouts into the blurb books. They're eight by eight, so nice and small. And uh, they all look the same from year to year on the outside. Of course, because I didn't do project life layouts for the majority of the second half of last year and then the beginning of this year, I didn't have those project life layouts to upload. But what I did have was 8,000 photos that I needed to get on top of. And so I decided that it was far more important that I got those photos into um, a book that the boys could enjoy instead of stressing about updating those project life layouts for the next few months. I had a look into different ways that I would be able to do that, but of course I wanted to stick with Blurb because we have so many books with them already and they fit nicely on the shelf. So they're all the same size, the same color on the outside. And even though they change from year to year, as I change the way that I like to record on the inside of the books, the outside looks the same, which is really good for someone like me. Here's what I did. The first thing I did was download BookWrite. It is a free downloadable program that Blurb has on their website. As far as I know, you can only download it onto a computer. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I did all of this from my Apple Mac not from my iPhone. Over the next two hours of trying to work book right out, I made a number of mistakes. And so I thought it would be really handy for me to do this video quickly to hopefully save you time and save you from making the same mistakes that I did. Here's the quickest way that I found. I uploaded the photos from my phone to my computer just using the cord that I normally upload photos from my phone onto the computer with. Once they were on my computer, what I did was I uploaded them into BookWrite. BookWrite would only let me upload 1,000 photos at a time. So that's what I did. I uploaded 1,000 photos. Most of those photos were full of duplicates. Once they were uploaded and into BookWrite, I deleted all the duplicates and only kept the ones that obviously I wanted to see in the book. Once I'd done that, I uploaded the next 1,000 photos into BookWrite and I just kept doing that um, on repeat until I had absolutely used every photo that I was allowed to upload into BookWrite. So until I reached the limit of how many photos I could have. Once I had all my photos uploaded into BookWrite, I added as many pages as it would let me add to a book. Now that will make a whole lot more sense once I show it to you on the screen. But uh, I, the first time I did it, I tried to auto create the book um, a few pages at a time. That didn't work well for me. So what I would recommend is that you add as many blank pages as you can, select the layout that you want for every one of the pages. I chose a three by three, so nine photos 
per page. There was a four by four, which would allow you to have 16 photos on every page. But because I ordered the small blurb book, the eight by eight square, I thought it would be too small to have those 16 photos on the same page. And then I selected the auto create book. And I watched as um, every photo was put into that book automatically for me. Now that sounds really easy, but along the way in the two hours of me trying it, I made heaps of mistakes. Uh, and that's why I thought it would be useful to show you what it looks like and how it works so that you don't have to make the same mistakes that I did. It's important before you press auto create book to select whether you want book right to order your photos from the oldest photo to the newest photo or the newest photo to the oldest photo. Now I personally prefer for the oldest photos to appear first and then as you look through the book for them to get newer but just make sure that you select the option that suits you best. Here are a few of the important buttons and features on BookRite. Along the top, you can see all my photos that I uploaded. So they're all along the top there. I have removed all the duplicates and they are ready, sorted using this drop down box over here to be sorted from old to new. And uh, if you have forgotten some photos or you want to add some more photos, you just select add photos over there on the left hand side and you'll be able to choose on your um, computer where you want to upload the photos from. On the left hand side, that's where all the pages are loaded. Mine have been auto created, so the pages are now full. But before you press auto create book, those pages are of course completely blank. So I think in my book, I had about 140 pages. Once you have all the white pages on the side there, obviously ignoring the photos that I have, select layouts at the top over here and scroll along until you find the layout that you want. So there are plenty of layouts. You can do some pages that have nine photos, some that have one photo on the page if it's really, if it's an important page. But of course, because I was using the auto create function, I needed to make sure that they were all the same. So this is the layout that I used, the three by three, and uh, you can do four by four, but I just think the photos will be a little bit too small. So I went with the three by three. And once all your pages look like that, you have selected from the bottom page on the left-hand side, all the way to your top blank page on the left-hand side, make sure they are all selected. So click the first one, hold shift, select the last one and you'll see they all get a blue border along the side there and then what you want to do is go to this button here that says auto create book and you'll be able to watch your photos being added into the squares the nine squares on each page along the left hand side of your screen and voila you are done the book has been created and uh, once you've done that you can preview on the right hand side and then upload it to blurb ready for printing on my lap here i have a few of the blurb books that i have ordered over the years and right on the top is the blurb book that i showed you in this video so you've been able to see these photos go all the way from my mobile phone onto my computer into book right, upload it into a blurb book and then see how it has turned out. It's eight by eight in size. I always choose the smaller size only because I know that over the years I'm probably going to order a few of them so I didn't want them to be too big, but that's what it looks like. I always love how they turn out. On the spine I have the date so that when they're sitting on the shelf I can easily see what um, album I'm looking for. And then inside on a double page spread you will just see that there are 18 photos to the two pages. I'll pick a layout to show you. The inside looks like this. The entire album is just photos. There aren't any captions. It's not Project Life layouts. They are just photos. And it meant that I was able to get all the way from February to August of 2017 printed into a photo book as quickly and as stress-free as possible. Now, when I order these books, I always pay the extra $4.99 and get a PDF version of the book. That means that I can reprint them from anywhere, really, if I want to. But the thing I love about Blurb is that if anything happened, if the, the photo books were damaged, you can go back online and order the same book that you've previously created. So all of these books on my lap 
have been saved onto Blurb's website. And as long as Blurb stays alive, I can reprint these uh, photo books as often as I need to and whenever I need to. So that is what this one looks like. I thought I would show you how they've changed on the inside over the years, just so that you can get some different ideas for photo books that you are creating. This is one of the first ones I did. That's Tim and I on our wedding day. And uh, I just did an album for Life Before Babies. So a snapshot of our life before babies. And uh, they are not nine to a page. Most of it is one photo per page because we didn't take as many photos back then. This is my prom. Um, I asked him to come to prom with me. He's four years older than me. But back then you were allowed to choose to take anyone to prom. So uh, it's just an album full of photos from before we got married, a few from our wedding and then from our honeymoon as well. Every now and then I also get our photo shoots printed into books. So they are normally one photo per page or no more than a couple per page. This was our trash the wedding dress or trash my wedding dress photo shoot so I had them printed into an album and uh, I just really enjoy going through these photos and uh, getting photo shoots that we've had and we've obviously shared online into books that the boys can flick through and that I can flick through it is obviously no secret that I love paper-based products and so having these to look through is just the best we don't have baby books for the boys, so each of them has a blur book. This is Hunter's, that's a photo from the um, the day that he was born. And it starts all the way from his baby showers. The front of the book has information about his birth. Um, we have our announcement, our pregnancy announcement photo shoot in there. Uh, it goes all the way through his baby shower. So we have photos from his baby shower. We had everyone guess whether he'd be a girl or a boy. Obviously Tim and I knew, but we didn't share that with anyone else. So we have team girl and team boy, which is really fun to look back over and see what people thought. Um, I have our pregnancy photo shoot in there. So all of this revolves around Hunter, of course. Tim and I had already named Hunter. You can see there in the photos when I was pregnant on the little board, his name is on there. But no one else knew that we were having a second little boy and of course no one knew his name. I have photos from when I was in labor. I have no idea why I'm laughing there in labor, but Sometimes you have to laugh or you'll cry. Um, and then, yeah, we have photos from, you know, the moment he was born. So it goes all the way through to his newborn photo shoot. And each of the boys have their own photo book. So we don't have baby books, but we do have these. Before I did Project Life, I used to print out my Instagram account into a photo book at the end of every year. I used to have a private Instagram account, so it was full of the boys, so full of photos of the boys and what they did at daycare or kindy as they've started school, um, and I'm a little bit more aware of what I share. That is why I moved away from just printing everything that I have on Instagram, because of course I don't share everything on Instagram anymore. But when I did, all I used to do was I would load all the photos photos from Instagram and I didn't auto create these books. I went through and chose which photos I wanted to be big, which photos were going to be small, um, how we were going to overlay them. And that's how I did the books before I started Project Life. So I would print out my Insta, upload all the Instagram photos, print them into a book and I just wrote on. So this one is the Baker's Instagram memories of 2012. Cruz actually has two books. So he has his baby book and then we have another book which really just revolves around him because Hunter wasn't born yet. So they are Cruzy's two books. Um, we have another couple of photo shoot books. 2014 or 2015 is when I started doing Project Life Loud. I'll show you what they look like. Um, so I have a separate YouTube video on how to create Project Life layouts digitally and what I did when I was doing Project Life and the system was working beautifully and I was on top of everything was that I would create a layout most days. I would write text about what we were doing, what I wanted to remember and then at the end of the year I would print them into a photo book. So what I love about Project Life is that it's not just photos, there's also text in there. There's just so many memories on every page. So my Project Life blurb book layouts are obviously the prettiest layouts that I have because I get, it's like scrapbooking, 
I'm dropping some of these books. It's like scrapbooking, but digital, and it just looks incredible. So I get to choose all the colors. It is by far, or they are by far, my prettiest blur books are the ones that I have uploaded digital project life layouts. And like I said before, I have a YouTube video on how to do that. And this is what I would like most of my photo albums to look like, uh, is to have project life inside them. But the point of this video is not about project life. It is of course a strategy for if your phone is overloaded with photos and you don't have the time to go through and put them all into project life layouts, what can you do to get yourself back on track and then restart project life? I hope this video has been helpful. I hope it's given you some motivation. If you're feeling a little bit overwhelmed with the amount of photos that you wanna get into a photo book, then hopefully this has given you some ideas on how you can tackle it in a short amount of time and hopefully as stress-free as possible. Thanks for joining me. Bye.